Welcome. This is going to be your very first unit in chemistry this year. A lot of the content and skills that you will learn in this unit will set you up for success as we go through the school year. So if you have trouble with any of the videos, make sure that you see your teacher so that they can help you. This unit in particular is going to focus on a lot of basic scientific principles that you've seen before. In particular today, we will talk about the scientific method. The scientific method is an organized approach to solving problems. And the good news is, is we do this all the time. You may not just realize it. The steps in the scientific method are very simple. First thing that we usually do whenever we see something around us that we're not sure of, we usually use our five senses. And so that's where our observation comes in. So we observe. To observe something, we need to use our five senses. So we hear, we taste, we smell, we see, and we touch. Obviously in chemistry, we probably won't taste anything. And at times you'll be able to touch things, but you do still need to be careful and make sure that you always wash your hands when you're done working in the lab. We use this step to help us define the problem. Our second step is hypotheses. Notice that I wrote hypotheses and not hypothesis. Because as you might expect, hypotheses really aim to help us be able to come up with an explanation for what is going on. But usually we don't just have one of them, so that's why I didn't use the word hypothesis. This is what we know as an educated guess. These are reasonable explanations that we propose for what is being observed. Experiments are up next. We test each hypothesis in order to prove or disprove them. Then as we go through our experiments, we have to analyze our results. And so this is where it compares the results from the experiment to the original hypothesis. Finally is our conclusion or our theory. So this is a hypothesis that is supported by our experimental evidence. You may say, what's a law have to do with this? What's the difference between a theory and a law? So a law is used to describe a natural phenomenon which has been tested over a long period of time under different conditions. A law is a very simple statement, like for example, what goes up must come down, or um, the law of gravitation, um, Newton's laws, right? For every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So um, these are very simple statements that don't seek to explain what's going on, but simply just offer something that um, is inevitable, something that is going to happen no matter what. Now in class, if you miss class, um, I showed a demonstration um, and your teacher most likely showed a demonstration of um, Coke versus Diet Coke. So here are the results and we kind of summarize this using the scientific method. So the first is we make an observation. And so the observation that we made was that the Coke sank and the Diet Coke floats. So then with our observations, we said, okay, um, the Coke was in a colorless liquid as was the Diet Coke. The Coke has caffeine versus the Diet Coke has no caffeine. So you get the idea. These are all observations. Then we came up with some hypotheses as to explain why the Coke sank and the Diet Coke floats. So for example, the hypotheses would be that maybe the two colorless liquids are not the same. So for example, maybe one is water and the other one is alcohol or ethanol. Maybe the one that um, has caffeine, caffeine's more dense than the one that doesn't, so that's why that sank. Right, so you get the idea. So these were all different hypotheses that we came up with. Then as you might expect, we have to experiment. So again, to support this problem, this observation to explain this, um, we said, okay, maybe they're not the same liquids. So our experiment would be to, for example, switch the two um, cans. So when we switch them, right, we noticed that nothing changed. We still saw that the Coke uh, sank and the Diet Coke was floating. In terms of the caffeine more, being more dense, we replaced the caffeine-free Diet Coke with a Diet Coke that does contain caffeine. 
For the different colors of cans, we thought the weight was different. We took the mass of each of the cans on a balance and saw that they were virtually very, very similar. Um, we weighed out the sugar and weighed out the NutraSweet. And then finally, we looked at the CO2 and we would collect the amount of gas from each can. So these are examples of all experiments. I noticed that I included both the experiments and the analysis together because you really need to be able to make sense of these experimental results. So we saw that when we weighed out the sugar and weighed out the NutraSweet, sugar is in fact more dense than NutraSweet. And so because of that fact, we would say that 39 grams of sugar is in regular Coke versus the 188 milligrams in NutraSweet and Diet Coke. So therefore, we can conclude that the um, regular Coke is more dense and therefore sinks. So hopefully this video was helpful in teaching you all about the scientific method and actually provided an out of the classroom experience with being able to understand the steps in the scientific method. Thank you so much for watching.